just start off by thanking and acknowledging Sean uh, Shelley, who is our PWUD policy advocacy uh, advisor, um, manager for the organization. He's been uh, an incredible uh, driving force in, in this area of work for TB HIV Care Association. So thanks, Sean, for doing this, uh, driving this so well. Um, this is an opportunity for us to reflect. We had the first uh, drug policy week happened in, in 2016. Um, so what I want to do is review with you uh, where, we've, where we've gone to from then. So um, in February 2016, ahead of the United Nations General Assembly Special Session on Drugs, or the UNGAS, TBHIV Care, with funding from Open Societies Foundation, held the first uh, SA Drug Policy Week. So known as, as RUN 2016, it was uh, a big success. It helped secure TBHIV Care's position as an organization that not only delivers services uh, to people who use drugs, but also advocates for their rights and effective drug policy. There's a long way to go still to resolve the imbalances uh, in services and inappropriate responses and punitive policies that still exist and negatively impact on the health of people who use drugs. But in the 18 months since RUN 2016, we really have covered a long distance. So in order to bring about change, we rely on the generosity of our funders, of course, and I just do want to acknowledge uh, that this whole thing started in 2013 through funding from the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief and CDC for, through, for our HIV prevention program in, uh, for people who inject drugs. Uh, and this also allowed us then to subcontract one of our important partner organizations out well-being in Pretoria. We also receive funding from Mainline, and that helps us to provide psychosocial support, uh, training, and special projects through the Bridging the Gaps program. We also want to thank Open Society Foundation's drug policy program. Uh, without their commitment, this, this event would never have happened. And, uh, and we, we welcome Ma'am Dean from OSF's uh, New York office. The Global Fund only recently entered the, the South African funding arena for people who, who use drugs, and we're very pleased to be subrecipients um, to the prime recipient, Right to Care, and we welcome the uh, representatives from, from Right to Care who are here as well. We're excited about receiving funding from the International Network of People Who Use Drugs, and also um, the Executive Director, Judy Chang, and her Deputy, Jay Levy, are both here as well. So we'd like to thank all of them Bristol Myers Squibb funds uh, a research project that I'll come to later on. At TBHIV Care, we believe in collaboration rather than in replication or duplication of services. And uh, as mentioned, INFOOD and TBHIV Care are working closely together uh, to establish representative groups of people who inject drugs. So this is a good example of collaboration with INFOOD, TBHIV Care, and out well-being. Um, to establish these groups in South Africa and Mainline provides funding for the training initiatives. We're also working with ARASA to establish a regional advocacy group to support the rights of people who use drugs. The Urban Future Center at Durban University of Technology has been very instrumental in the joint development of some exciting new services uh, in KwaZulu-Natal. So we welcome the head of UFC, Monique Marx, to, to this event. And the University of Pretoria's Department of Family Medicine has also implemented a community-oriented substance use program. And we'd like to thank Prof. Yanni Hugo, who's the, the head of the Department of Family Medicine, for being here. During uh, 2016, TBHIV Care became a full member of IDPC, and uh, we welcome Jamie Bridge and Maria Greta Ann uh, from IDPC, and Sean Shelley, um, has also been elected to the strategic subcommittee of IDPC as the Africa, African and Middle East representative. So we really do focus a lot on providing services because this is one of the most vulnerable populations um, in South Africa. Last year, around 2016, there were a number of side meetings to discuss uh, the, uh, what are the essential services, and an important 
gap in our service delivery at that time was identified was opiate substitution treatment. So we, we, our harm reduction services uh, include needle and syringe programs and, and referral uh, for, for counseling, but it was very difficult. There was no access to, to OST. So uh, we've, we resolved then to establish a, a demonstration project that could help the implementation of local OST programs. And what's really exciting now is that this is going to be happening now in, in several different cities across South Africa. In collaboration with UFC in June of this year, we initiated the first patient on a low threshold methadone maintenance program for people who use drugs. Um, and so we're learning from that implementation. Uh, we thank Monique and her staff for, these, uh, for the efforts and Andrew Shaiba for his commitment to make this a reality. We also want to acknowledge Equity Pharmaceuticals who made a free methadone, who are providing free methadone for these demonstration projects, or this particular one. And uh, the University of Pretoria Department of Family Medicine's community-oriented substance use program is supplying subsidized uh, methadone at, at multiple sites already in the city of Swanee. So we're, going to, we're really looking forward to strengthening our links with that program. And thank uh, Yanni Hugo and his team and, uh, and the representation from the city of Tswane uh, for attending. TB HIV Care with funding from, from Global Fund via Right to Care will be launching an OST program in Cape Town. And there was a really productive meeting earlier th this afternoon to work out some of the logistics about the supply of methadone. And we're really hoping to be providing this service from August uh, from next month. And then we also look forward to the launch of ANOVA's, um, ANOVA Health OST program. That's going to be in Johannesburg, and Anthony Mannion from ANOVA is with us as well. I really love this shot because it shows our drop-in center in Cape Town, and uh, it was the launch of the drop-in center and the key populations clinic where we provide health services in a, a comprehensive package of HIV and TB prevention, screening, linkage to care, and support. Um, for, for both sex workers and people who inject drugs. And this is the, um, the, the chill out zone at the, at the uh, kind of the waiting area in the, in the drop-in center. And uh, the woman dressed in traditional clothing is um, Noma French Mbombo, who's the provincial minister of health. So she came on Africa Day to launch the drop-in center and clinic. And there are uh, uh, peers there, there's a representative from CDC, from the National Department of Health, Hasina Subadar, and our, our team members who are there. One of the really important services uh, that we provide is actually accessing, acquiring identity documents, so we facilitate that. Um, these, the, the, the safe spaces are proving it to be a really important part of our service delivery program. And, uh, and we've heard from our users that they really, they, they say it's, it's just helping to restore their dignity. It makes such a difference to have a safe space to come to. And um, we have showers there, and we also have um, computer terminals, so people want to um, look for, for job placements or get access services. They, they can also use the, the premises for that. TBHIV Care is, is leading um, a whole consortium of partners, including the University of Cape Town's Division of Hepatology, the National Institute of Communicable Disease, OUT, LGBT Wellbeing, ANOVA, to implement a cross-sectional hepatitis B and C survey among key populations, and Andrew Scheib has really helped a lot to drive this. Um, and it's looking at including, um, it's uh, for sex, a survey among sex workers, people who inject um, drugs and many of sex with men in seven cities. And some of the results, the preliminary results, we, we actually just announced in a press release on World Hepatitis Day. And, uh, and it's a quite, there's hepatitis C prevalence is quite high in, in key populations with 13% prevalence across all populations. But looking at people who inject drugs, it's huge. It's 54% of people who inject drugs in South Africa across the various sites are infected with hepatitis C. Now we know that hepatitis C is, is a treatable infectious disease now. Um, it's quite expensive to treat it and it's only through specialized centers. But clearly this is one important element of the package of healthcare services that is required for people who inject drugs. So we're, um, 
we're now um, developing a proposal to, to provide uh, um, decentralized uh, HCV testing and treatment for people who inject drugs. Uh, a number of peer-reviewed publications were published in the last 18 months, including a piece in the Harm Reduction Journal on using a programmatic mapping approach to plan for HIV prevention and harm reduction interventions for people who inject drugs. Um, and we are also going to have a chapter in the South African Health Review. Um, TB HIV care staff and consultants submitted a number of abstracts uh, for presentations, post uh, posters, we had skills building workshops as well at the South African AIDS conference this year. And uh, during the South African Drug Policy Week, in fact on Thursday, we're going to be releasing three different reports. So that's something to look forward to this week. And uh, the research of course, on its own, is an advocacy tool. It provides the data that we need to show what works and, and what is needed. TBHIV care was represented at the 59th uh, Commission on Narcotic Drugs in Vienna, and excellent connections were made. At the 2016 IAS conference, together with the Urban Future Center, we had a networking zone, and the feedback from IAS was that it was the best ever harm reduction service provided in the last 20 years of the conference, so that was great feedback to receive. Um, and we also want to thank H-Factor, who um, were the production house for um, for that event and for this event. We were honored to assist as well in facilitating the visit of the Global Commission on Drug Policy Commissioner and former Swiss President Madame Ruth Dreyfus last year. And um, we thank the Global Commission for Drug Policy for their presence. Uh, presence sorry. Executive Secretary Khalid Tinasti is here and Commissioner Anand Grover will be joining us later on this week. Through the community advisory groups uh, with people accessing services, we quickly determined that engaging with law enforcement was critical. And one of the things that we've struggled with in different cities is, is um, that police will trail after our mobile wellness services and harass our clients. And so it's, it's so critical to be able to provide a comprehensive HIV and uh, and TB prevention and care package to engage with law enforcement officials, to engage with the police. So another initiative was participation in the development of the South African Police Force and uh, COC Netherlands Diversity, Digni Dignity and Policing training program for police around improved engagement and relationships with key populations. Um, locally, I also met with, the, the head of health facilitated a meeting for me with um, Vusi Pikoli, who's the Ombudsman for South African Police Service, and, and we raised the issue with him that we, we really are, through distributing needles and syringes uh, in communities, we're helping with harm reduction to prevent the spread of HIV and hepatitis C, and that we're doing it responsibly. We're counseling our clients to make sure that they dispose of needles properly and return needles when they pick up new ones. And, and now it's actually going to help us a lot to have the OST as part of our package because then it's clear that we're also assisting people who choose to stop injecting drugs um, to, to at least enter um, um, an OST program. So here we are, we've gone along, we've come a long way. We, at the uh, 2017 SA Drug Policy Week, in reflecting on the past 18 months, a lot has been achieved. Um, People may not know, but TBHIV Care Association is an NGO that's been around since 1929. It was first called uh, TB Care Association, and in 2008 we changed the name to TBHIV Care. Um, and we've always been really committed to providing services to marginalized people. And our next challenge is to ensure that people who use drugs are able to access health services and that the policy framework doesn't impact negatively on their constitutional rights. Health for all is a human right, it's enshrined in our constitution, and I hope that we will soon see an Africa where all people enjoy the basic right of access to health, whether, whether or not they're using drugs. Thanks very much. <laughs>